Looking at what we know so far, Mike, the RCMP held a briefing this afternoon. What are they saying about what they know? Well, the RCMP were very clear that they are not assigning culpability or laying blame at this point. But they have spoken with the driver of the semi-truck who's been released from hospital. But key to this investigation will be what the bus driver has to say. And he has yet to be released. Skid marks on the highway, a stop sign torn from the ground, and the unmistakable scorched earth left by an intense fire are all that's left from one of the deadliest accidents in Manitoba history. Oh my gosh. It was only yesterday when first responders from hours away and across the province descended on this stretch of the Trans-Canada Highway, roughly two hours west of Winnipeg, near the town of Carberry, after a semi-trailer hit a bus carrying seniors on a trip to a casino. 15 seniors have been declared dead so far, with another 10 in hospital with serious injuries. It was totally burned out, yeah. The, the passenger vehicle was totally burned out. When I saw it was, it was almost 20 foot uh, feet of, of, of fire flame and all the um, uh, smoke. Here's what we know. At the intersection of the Trans-Canada and Highway 5 north of Carberry, the terrain is flat, visibility unobstructed. Highway 1 has two lanes in each direction, separated by a grassy median. The RCMP say the bus from Dauphin was headed south on Highway 5, where it would have come to a stop sign with a flashing stoplight. Investigators say it passed through the westbound lanes of the Trans-Canada as a fast-moving semi-trailer was heading east. The violence of the collision propelled the bus over 100 metres down the road onto the south shoulder. Witnesses say victims were lying on the road after being thrown from the vehicle. The bus caught on fire, burning, until only a shell was left. Why this happened won't be known for a long time. As far as um, the vehicle pulling out or the right away, I'm not going to answer that right now. I know that's an answer that people are looking for. Um, that's a, a real critical point of the investigation. The RCMP deployed forensic collision and reconstruction experts and even called in the investigators who worked the Humboldt bus crash tragedy in 2018. So I would expect that uh, they are going to be careful with this one, especially if they're calling in the, the officers and the resources that were involved in the Humboldt crash. The area where the accident occurred is wide open, and it happened just before noon on a clear day. But locals tell Global News they've complained about the intersection being dangerous for years, in particular the median, which isn't wide enough to allow a truck to comfortably stop. With so much damage to the bus, investigators will have their hands full. This one is going to be a, a bit of a tricky to reconstruct given that we're not necessarily going to see definitive uh, areas of damage to the bus because it was all consumed by fire. But again, in those types of situations, what we do is we rely on the roadway evidence uh, as well as the information that we can obtain from the truck. Now, Manitoba's Chief Medical Officer of Health also spoke today and he said how difficult it was going to be to be able to identify the deceased. We have a few avenues to, uh, to explore. One would be fingerprint analysis. So we are going to check and see if any of the reported deceased individuals have fingerprints on file. Failing that, the next step would be to try and identify the deceased using dental records, uh, as well as uh, features of their medical history or surgical history, which might be of assistance. For instance, uh, if they have any medical prostheses, hip replacements, knee replacements that would have serial numbers that we could identify during a post-mortem examination. Now, post-mortems will begin on Monday. They have three full-time investigators working on this, and they clearly have a lot of work left to do. Donna. All right, Mike Drolet, thank you. In the days and weeks ahead, when we know how it happened, people will wonder if anything could have been done to prevent the collision. This is the prairie, the intersection where the crash happened. Behind me has no traffic lights. There's no overpass, of course, just stop signs. As Eric Sorensen reports, in this country, that is not unusual. In big population centres like Toronto, they've taken the intersection out of highways that intersect with overpasses and clover leaves to ensure crossing traffic never meets. It creates an efficient and safer traffic flow. That's not what exists in vast stretches of the country. The Trans-Canada connects the nation from the east coast to the west, but crisscrosses hundreds of roads without so-called grade separation. Well, it makes your heart jump a bit. Trucker Travis McDougall just drove from Manitoba to Ontario and says he has to watch the intersections closely along the Trans-Canada. I've probably had more close calls with somebody else trying to cross the highway. We want to be looking at at, at if there's anybody waiting to cross, right? 
you want to try and watch. At an intersection like the one in Manitoba, it's not one simple calculation to cross a four-lane divided highway. First, there's a stop sign to assess the two lanes of high-speed traffic coming from the left, and then a yield sign at the median, a precarious moment midway across before quickly reassessing what's coming the other way at high speed and then proceeding. Are there safer options? Potentially, you can install traffic lights for a couple of hundred thousand dollars or build a roundabout for several hundred thousand dollars. The safest would be an overpass, but that can cost many millions of dollars. At the intersection of Manitoba's highways 16 and 1, the Yellowhead and the Trans-Canada, they installed traffic lights some years back. But there's still been accidents, so the government pledged to do more. We've seen some tragedies there. We are going to design a roundabout for this intersection. Three years later, there are still just traffic lights. Governments must constantly review where to spend limited dollars on expensive infrastructure. Those options are not feasible in every intersection. You know, when you are in the rural Canada, when you are in the extreme north, we can't have, you know, uh, overpasses or traffic lights being placed at uh, every nook and corner. So that is where, you know, the technical reviews will come into place. But it's also up to Canadian drivers approaching intersections. Biggest thing is, you know, don't be afraid to take that second look. McDougall emphasizes driver training and always be attentive. Eric Sorensen, Global News. A support line for grieving families has been set up in the region. There is a number to call. It is for families. It's 204-647-5058. And a support center is also being run out of the Dauphin Lutheran Church for those who feel they need it.